Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of our entire third season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be chatting about something large format. Over the course of the past three seasons, one question that I've been continually getting asked is, do you use color filters for black and white? And while the answer is a resounding yes, anytime I try to show just one example of the filter, the question always comes up, well, what about this filter and this filter? So today, here it is. This is the colored filters for a black and white episode. We're here in the Riverside, here in Columbus, Ohio, and I waited for the light to come up a little bit so I could find, uh, find some areas to utilize some of this contrast. A few weeks ago, I did a video on why I shoot black and white, and one of the primary reasons is contrast is key in black and white. To control that contrast a little bit better, we can use filters that limit the spectrum of light that we're able to capture uh, with our black and white films. Now, black and white films come in a few different varieties. We have our panchromatic films, which see basically the same range of colors that our eyes can normally see, which is our Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, uh, and sometimes a little bit into the ultraviolet spectrum. And then we also have our orthochromatic films, which don't see the Roy part of the Roy G. Biv spectrum. Today, I'm gonna to be using Ilford Delta 100 because it's what I have already tested, and I have some in some four x five sheets. I wasn't gonna burn through a bunch of eight by 10 sheets of film to show different examples of these colored filters. So I'm gonna put my pack down, and I'm gonna fetch out my filters and show you what we're gonna be using today. So of our colored filters that we're gonna be using for black and white film, I've got my yellow 15, my orange 21, my red 25, my green 11, and my blue 47. Now these numbers correspond to uh, Tiffin's specific numbering for these colored filters, uh, but filters by their very nature are restrictive. They're only permitting a certain amount of light to come through. My orange 21, this is gonna need two f-stops of compensation. My red 25, this is gonna need two and a half stops of compensation. Green 11, it's gonna take another one and a half stops. And this blue 47 is gonna take, just like the red filter, two and a half stops of compensation. Now each one of these filters is gonna have a slightly different action when it comes to photographing various different colors, uh, but we can use that color wheel or that uh, Roy G. Biv color scale to kind of inform us of uh, what these various filters are gonna do. So going back to the yellow, this isn't gonna affect much of the Roy portion of Roy G. Biv, but it's gonna have a significant effect on its complement color. Complement of yellow is purple, so the Biv portion of Roy G. Biv is gonna be a little bit more affected when we use this. With the orange filter, again, it's not gonna do much to Roy, but it's gonna do a little bit more to Biv. Our red filter is going to cut out a significant amount of our exposure because of that heavy filter factor, and it's also gonna significantly darken most of the Biv portion of Roy G. Biv. And then our green and blue filters, they're a little more corner case, a little bit more specialty. These are going to cut out some of the Roy portions of the Roy G. Biv. Using a green or blue filter isn't something that folks will commonly do, but they do have their own unique kind of effects. Uh, using these is gonna more, uh, more closely mimic the effects of orthochromatic or more traditional emulsions. So now we've briefly gone over the filters, let's head on down to the water and test it out. Come on. All right, let's, uh, let's set up the camera. So for my first shots, I'm gonna aim across the water here because we have some nice, even daylight coming through. And I think it's gonna provide a really nice example of what happens when we use our most common color filters for black and white. So I've got my 355 millimeter or my eight x 10 standard lens for four x five. What we're shooting today, it's a little bit on the longer side. I've already got my filter adapter ring on here. This is to allow me to use uh, those larger square drop-in filters that you saw earlier. This is a Benro filter holder. It does pretty well. 
Just gotta unlock it here and slide it onto the ring. There we go. Now it's gonna be ready to accept our filters. Now, when it comes to using color filters for black and white film, I don't really think it matters which type you use. I use glass filters because they're hefty and they really kind of take a beating going in and out of the bag. You could also use uh, less expensive uh, acetate or gelatin filters. And you, know, you can also use ones that thread on to the front or on some large format lenses. Go ahead and take a look. Uh, some large format lenses are threaded on the back. This one is not because this is a modified process lens. If you do thread something to the backside, make sure everything's nice and clean because any any dust or scratches there can show up in your final picture. So again, on my 8x10, I'm using a reducing back. This is going to allow me to shoot 4x5 film, which will be much less expensive to do multiple different shots with, uh, with different color filters. So the film we're using today is Ilford Delta 100, which several weeks back when I did film testing, I figured out that ISO 125 was the right range to shoot that at with the developer that I'm using. So I'm gonna set my meter here to ISO 125. There we go. And we're gonna find our exposure across the water here. The light's pretty even and I can pretty safely bank on sunny 16, but let's, let's go through the motions anyway. So our sunny 16 means when it's uh, sun's to your back, bright sunny day, you can set your aperture to 16 and your shutter speed to one over your film's speed. In this case, we're not quite that bright yet. We're still a little hazy in the sky. So my exposure, instead of being one 1 25th of a second is one 60th of a second at F16. And that's gonna be perfect for our exposure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up our control shot, which is no no filter whatsoever. All right, attach the cable release. Always be sure to close that lens. F16. All right, test exposure is going in. Again, this is our control. This is no filter. So let's go ahead and slide in our yellow filter. And again, the filter factor for this is 1.5 stops. Uh, I want to try and control uh, my aperture on the lens. I don't wanna change my depth of field. So the only thing I can do to change the exposure properly is to change my shutter speed. Now I have a stop and a half to make up and to make that up, I will, come in half a stop on the aperture and one stop on the shutter speed. That's gonna be the easiest way to go. 15th of a second, but then I'm going to go to 16 and a half. Great. All right, ready one and Yellow filter is out, orange filter is in. Now this is the benefit I think of using a filter holder system. It literally just slides out, the next one slides in. Downsides of course to using a system like this, these filters are larger and more expensive. For the orange filter is compensated with two f-stops. I'm gonna go to f16. This is gonna give us the same net exposure uh, but accounting for our filter factor. Cock the shutter, give it a test. All right, ready and. Okay, orange filter is out. There we go and red filter is in. There we go. Now I need to make up another half stop in difference. So what I'm gonna do there, I'm gonna go to an eighth of a second and then bump it back up to 16 
and a half. Again, this is to help us uh, get the same amount of exposure, but compensating for the heavy filtration that this is knocking out. Uh, you know what? It's just film. Let's go ahead and put put the green and blue filters on there and see what they look like. Again, this, these are not going to be recommended filters for this, this particular scene. So we're back to a one-stop compensation instead of, uh, instead of the heavier filtration. So I'm going to go back to F16 and I'm going to bump it up to a 30th of a second. Our, remember, our metered exposure was a 60th of a second at F16. Good, there's our green filter. Let's go ahead and pop our blue filter on there. Now our blue filter is gonna need the same exposure time as our red filter. Ooh. It's all right, you want the fit to be kind of snug on here. Blue filter coming. There we go. One, two, and a half. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. Again, I would not recommend a blue and a green filter for this type of scene, but I do want to photograph a scene that I think would benefit uh, from the use of these two filters. So we're going to change out to what is ordinarily my wide angle. This is my 150, but again, on 4x5, this is going to be a standard lens. So I'm going to bump my rear standard up. Now this lens here is just about on the upper limit of what I can adapt uh, a filter holder to. I just have a 95 mil ring, very thin shell that sits on here, but it's enough to do it. I have to be careful with how this sits on here. If I have it at a slightly off angle, I could start to get some cutoff or vignetting because of this lens being super wide. But since I am using a four x five reducing back, I'm gonna be cropping in quite a bit more so I won't be seeing that, uh, that effect that I normally get with eight x 10. Get some focus. There we go. Pretty easy focus there. I'm gonna do some rise. Again, the cool thing, because I'm using a lens that's good for 8x10, I have all the movements available to me. So what I'm looking at here in this scene, I have a lot of foliage, a lot of trees. I'm backlighting these trees because I want to showcase what happens when you use a filter that's going to, uh, to really enhance that foliage, namely a green filter. So we're going to do no filter, yellow filter, green filter, blue filter, and give some examples for that. There's the high values, low values, middle values. Oh yeah, we need a lot more exposure than we did before. It doesn't feel like I need that much light, but when you're in those open shadows, you really gotta watch your exposure. Don't trust your eyes, trust your meter. So our base exposure that we're arriving at kind of uh, between our deepest shadow values and our brightest, uh, our brightest values quarter second at F11. And we need our cable release. Can't forget that. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and add our yellow filter. So this is gonna change our exposure a little bit. All right, 
yellow filter out, green filter in. And this green filter only needs a stop, so we're gonna go back up to F11. Everything else is good. One and, nice, okay. Out with the green, in with the blue. Now blue's gonna need a whole stop and a half, so we're gonna go to eight and a half. Here we go. So fun camera fact, uh, there was somebody who was watching the show and they noticed something that I hadn't in almost 10 years with this Takahara here. That uh, initially uh, someone had replaced some of the, uh, some of the plastic bushings on, uh, on this little retaining clip and it was actually replaced on the camera upside down. Uh, this flat piece was just barely latching on to the lens board and now I have a lot more surface contact with that. So, uh, so keep the comments coming guys. Oh, well, let's talk results. The control photograph really was a little bit too hazy. Ohio is known for its haze. If you're shooting in an environment that tends to be a lot hazier and um, not a lot of clear days, probably don't wanna shoot black and white in direct sunlight without some sort of filter. Even adding the yellow filter cut down the haze significantly, but we really started to see that extra pop between the water, sky, and trees once we got into the orange and red filters. Without looking at the results, I would have guessed the orange would have been my go-to, but man, I just really love that extra punch of contrast that the red filter gives me, even though it did, uh, it did overall knock down a majority of the exposure, which is pretty easy to, uh, to bring back up in printing or scanning. By the way, these were all scanned on the same parameters on my Epson scanner, target input, output, as well as equal corrections uh, in Lightroom just to generate what you're seeing on the screen here. So I gave this fair a chance as possible. Now, the blue and the green, I went ahead and did them because why not? But man, they were very, very different, weren't they? Blue filters on a bright sunny day make it look like a photograph that could have been taken over a hundred years ago because the sky just goes almost white, uh, the water started to go lighter, and I was starting to lose some extra detail uh, and separation between uh, all the foliage and some of the foreground. So I definitely didn't like blue for that. Green was surprising. It gave me a little bit of extra punch uh, and differentiation between the foliage, which that's exactly what it's for. Now moving on to the second shot, I chose an intentionally different scene uh, that had some significant backlight going into it. The control shot looked really good, and well, that's usually how I shoot in those type of environments. The yellow filter really wasn't doing us any favors because it cut through that haze, but it also just kind of reduced that extra oomph we were getting from that, uh, that clear sky backlight coming in. So I didn't like the yellow filter. The blue and the green, again, the green was kind of surprising to me. That extra punch that it gave me, it maintained some of the haze, but it really popped all of that different foliage. And of course, depending on what you shoot with your large format photography is going to determine uh, what filter kit you end up with. If you don't have a regular go-to kit, here's the order I would recommend uh, picking up some of these filters. If you just wanna buy one filter and you wanna get that real punchy effect, I would do a red filter. If you're just an all-around shooter, maybe you do portraits, maybe you do a little bit of landscape, switch that off to a yellow filter. You could get a, a more pale or straw yellow filter, or you could go for a really, really strong one uh, like this and get an almost orange effect out of it. A lot of folks start with a trio, which would be the Roy of Roy G. Biv, your red, orange, yellow. This is a really strong kit, which will cover a majority of situations where you'd want to filter. And then if you wanted to go all out or you like doing kind of the fog and snow and a lot of backlight and hazy mornings, yeah, go for, uh, go for that blue filter. And if you shoot a lot inside forests or you do foliage or macro and flowers, close up, that sort of thing, 
a green filter, you can see some significance there too. For more information on working with color filters for black and white photography, no surprise here, I'm gonna recommend book two of the Ansel Adams trilogy, The Negative. It's an excellent resource. He goes in meticulous detail uh, about these filters and uh, it's great. What filters do you use with your black and white photography? Do you use any? Uh, what's, uh, what's one that you always carry with you? I'm a little bit guilty. I don't always carry my filters with me because they don't always call for it. But when I have them, for me personally, it only takes one shot to make having purchased a filter entirely worth it. Remember, these things, as long as they're not cracked or horrendously scratched, you can get uh, these thick glass ones used for a significant discount. So you can, again, you can get drop-in filters, screw-on filters with large format lenses, check to see if the rear element is smaller and has threads, and that will allow you to, uh, to thread on a filter. Or you can go for um, some resin or some acetate or gelatin filters and just tape those on the back. Along with this week's results, something else pretty cool happened. We hit over 50 Large Format Friday sustaining members. Thank you so much for those of you who've continued to support the channel, writing in, asking questions, buying prints, and those of you who are contributing monthly at the uh, $1 and up sustaining levels. Thank you so much. It allows me to do things like burn some film today to show you how these, these colored filters work. So thank you so much. If you have any questions about the large format photographic process, be sure to drop those down below in the comments. And for those long form questions, shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.